Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm trying out Hannah Mule's eco-friendly bamboo paper with this little 3x4 inch pad. I mentioned it in my last video where I tested their agave watercolour paper, but this is mixed media paper, so I'm going to test not just one but three different mediums on it today to see how it performs and hopefully help you decide if it's something you'd like to try yourself. So I hope you enjoy the video. Hannah Mule did send me this little pad for free along with the agave paper I showed you but they are not sponsoring this video so all thoughts are my own honest opinion. So let's get started. This bamboo paper is 265 grams or 125 pounds in weight, natural white and acid free and contains 90% bamboo fibre which makes it highly renewable and eco-friendly. The other 10% being cotton rag. It does state in the blurb that it can be used for watercolour, acrylic and pastel so I thought it would be fun to try each of these mediums in turn today and paint some simple spring florals. I'll leave a link to the reference pictures and supplies I used in the description box below if you want to go and check them out. I'm starting with a watercolour painting first as this is the medium I'm most familiar and comfortable with. I've taken the paper out of the pad and taped it to a piece of foam board just to make things easier. I wanted to try various watercolour techniques for this paper and I was really interested to see how it compared to the agave watercolour paper I'd used last time. I began with a wet on wet background and I was really pleasantly surprised. The slightly textured surface of this paper at first glance is very similar to the agave but if anything feels a bit rougher. Either way I found the paint flowed really nicely across the surface of the wet paper and this enabled me to get the nice soft edges I wanted around the clouds without any problems. On the agave paper I did struggle a bit on the first wet in wet layer since the water and paint seemed to take a while to soak into the paper and a few people in the comments suggested that this could be to do with the paper's sizing. Sizing is added to paper during manufacture to help paint flow across the paper. But since there is no mention of sizing on either of these papers, I contacted Hannah Moulet to check. They got back to me super quickly and informed me that all of their natural line papers are sized internally using a vegan animal free sizing which I have to admit I didn't even know existed so I'm glad to have learned something new and I thought that might be of interest to you as well. Once the background and leaves had dried I went on to paint the petals of the tulip using a light wash of quinacridone magenta and painting onto dry paper. And as much as I said this paper felt slightly rougher than the agave, the paint laid down really smoothly and easily and I think the colours looked really fresh and bright. It was also really easy to lift paint out and create the highlights, like I'm doing on this petal here. I made sure to let that first layer dry completely before adding further layers of quinacridone magenta. But I had no issues here either. In fact, there wasn't anything I didn't like about painting on this paper. I realise it may be difficult to accurately judge on such a small scale but I really like the feel of it and I'd like to experiment more. And in case you are interested in trying this paper out for yourself there is now the functionality on Hannah Mule's website to order sample sheets at £1.50 per sheet with free shipping for UK residents. Coming to the end of this painting now and I added some purple to the shadow areas and finished up by re-wetting the sky and adding more ultramarine blue to help the tulips stand out. It's quite a simple little painting but I enjoyed it. For my next piece I'm going to use my Stabilo Carbothello Pastel Pencils to draw another simple flower, a daisy. As before, I've drawn my outline sketch in pencil, lightened it with a kneadable eraser and taped it to a small piece of foam board. I started this one with the background again just to quickly outline the shape of the daisy and get a feel for how the pastels behave on this paper before filling in any of the smaller details. You can really see the texture of the paper showing through here 
and it's that texture that really helps to give the pastels something to hold on to. I haven't used pastels for ages so it was really nice to get them out again for this video. Pastels can be mixed easily on the paper and I switched over to a lighter green at the bottom here, overlapping the colours for a smooth colour transition. I used the side of my pencil and a light pressure to fill in the background so as not to damage the tooth of the paper, as this will prevent me from adding more layers. To smooth or blend this all out and cover up any of the white paper showing through, you can use either a soft brush, a tissue or even a clean finger, but I like to use a paper stump and a light pressure as it's a lot cleaner, makes less dust and is a bit more precise, so good for smaller pieces like this. Next I start to work on the centre of the daisy, and for this I work in layers, starting with some yellow green and then adding in a couple of different yellow ochre colours. I'm using small circular motions again with my pencil and then go back to my blending stump to smooth it all out before adding the next layer. Having a paper that is able to coat with multiple layers is really important when working in pastels and coloured pencils, as it's these multiple layers that build depth and realism to your artwork. And this paper didn't disappoint. So as long as you use light pressure with your pencils and blending methods, I found you can continue to add still further layers on this paper without any problem. On this last layer here, I added in brighter yellow and more green to add luminosity and depth. I decided not to blend this last layer though, as the textured finish actually looked more realistic. Then all that was left to do was to add some colour to the white petals. And as with any white subject, the white areas are rarely, if ever, pure white. So I used a mixture of greys, light blue and purple for the petals, mixing, blending and layering on the surface of the paper. I finished off the stem and then added some dark brown and dark grey where the centre yellow part of the daisy meets the petals to really help it look 3D. Before moving on to the last painting though, another thing I like to do with pastels is to use a kneadable or fine tipped eraser to carefully lift out any highlights, neaten up any smudges or uneven edges and that all helps to give it a more polished look. Now on to my last painting today and for this I'm using golden open acrylics to paint a simple bluebell. I haven't done a great deal of paintings in acrylic, but those I have done have either been on canvas or wood, so I was really interested to see how this would work out. And because I was painting on paper, it didn't really occur to me to prime or gesso the surface before I started, until I'd already started, but on this small scale it didn't really matter too much. On a larger piece of paper though, you might want to consider doing that first. I found this first background layer quite fiddly and could really have done with adding a bit more water to my paint to thin it out and help it flow more easily. But that was my fault and not the papers and the second layer went on much more smoothly and I was able to mix in some orange and lighter green to add a bit of interest. It took a few layers before I was happy with the background, but I was really impressed with how this bamboo paper held up to having multiple layers of acrylic paint on it. So with that dry I could then begin to paint in the bluebells. For this I mixed up the blue violet colour using a mixture of quinacridone magenta and ultramarine blue. I also added some white just to soften it out a bit. With more paint on my brush this time, the colour laid down really smoothly, but painting details in acrylic on such a small scale proved quite a challenge, 
and I was forced to focus more on general shapes and values and paint a bit more loosely. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I ended up wishing I had a bigger size piece of paper. Looking through their catalogue, Hanamule offers this paper in several larger size pads, all containing 25 sheets, ranging from this, the smallest size, up to 42 by 56 centimetres. And as a rough guide, a 24 by 32 centimetres pad of 25 sheets, which is a bit bigger than A4, would cost around £17.60, which I think is really good. I also love the fact that it's so versatile and fun to paint on, and of course that it's natural, sustainable and resource saving. I think out of the two natural lime papers I've tried, agave and the bamboo, so far I prefer this one, but I'd like to try painting on a larger scale before I can be sure. I did manage to add a bit more detail towards the end of this painting by using a size 1 liner brush, and I ended up really liking the bold bright colours and contrast, but let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Comment below as well if you've tried this paper before and let me know which medium you like to use on it. Thank you so much for watching, take care, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!